first question, how's the new year? Positive, negative, okay? What are your thoughts? What are you seeing? What are you feeling? I'm sorry, Jasleen? Nothing to write home about. Well, I'm going to give you something to write home about today. Please do. I will. How about anybody else? By the way, um, what's her name reached out to me? Megan. Yes. And uh, she completed the app. So that was like all of a sudden. Perfect. Anybody else? Some feedback? Bill? Hey, he's on a, he's on, he's on a tear. Yeah. So that's exciting. All right. So I'm going to talk about something today. For those of you who take the time to read Friday's Finest, some of you do, some of you don't. Um, that's okay either way. But this past um, Friday, when I sent out Friday's Finest, and by the way, if some of you don't get Friday's Finest, just let me know and I'll make sure you're in the database so you start receiving it. But on Friday this past week, um, I put something in there about a down payment assistance program. Now, some of you who know me pretty well know that I have been saying for all the years you've known me and all the years before that, I don't do down payment assistance. I despise those loans for several reasons. Um, one of the reasons I don't like the loan is that usually they involve some type of a bond program through the city, the county, or the state, or federal, whatever it happens to be. It also generally requires a second underwrite. And that is a disaster. I don't know if any of you have ever used or heard of the Georgia Dream Program. And it's touted as this wonderful thing, and it's nothing but a pain in the butt. And thank you, Jasleen. Amen on that one. So I had made a decision, and you've all heard Mike talk about this. Sometimes it's better to walk away from something because it involves too much of your time or my time and we lose opportunity. So I've always said, I'm not gonna get involved in down payment assistance and bond programs and all these things. Let other loan officers do it. You'll also know that I don't refer, if I have to refer a loan to someone, I have no problem doing it. I do not refer down payment assistance. Reason why is I don't know any loan officers that do a good job. And I'm not talking about getting the loan closed. Anybody can find a way to get a loan closed. I'm talking about delivering an experience that people can be proud of. So I don't, because I don't know anybody that does. So I've stayed away from them. Yet on Friday, and now I am talking about a down payment assistance program. And I'm gonna give you some information about it. Um, and so the big difference between this program and why I have always chosen not to do them is about threefold. Number one, it is not a bond program. It does not go, it's not a city, state, federal, um, co uh, county program. It's not. That's number one. Number two, it never leaves our office to go to somebody else to get underwritten. It's ours from day one. We are going to underwrite it. Number three is two parts. It's one simple underwrite. We're going to under, we're going to put all both loans together. We're going to underwrite the loans like we typically do on FHA. We'll run it through automated underwriting. And if we get a positive response through automated underwriting, I've got to look at my findings. If it comes back, approve, uh, accept eligible, we can do the loan. And th that means the second is already approved. I don't have to go anywhere else to get an approval. That to me is huge because going to the Georgia Dream Program to whoever looks at those loans is a pain and it takes a time, which is the second part of number three. We don't have to add any time to do this loan. Whatever we would normally do for FHA, whether it's 17 days, 22 days, 30 days, that's what we can do. It doesn't have to go 35, 40, 45, 50 days to close the loan. So for those reasons, I looked at this when I was introduced to it last week and said, oh, this may, use the word may, have some opportunity for all of us. Now, this is not for the weak of heart. 
The other thing I've always fussed about with down payment assistance programs, this one included, is that if you're going to give somebody a break, let's really give them a break. Well, that's not how it works. There are no breaks. Chris, you've done a few things, some, some weird loans. They charge ridiculous amounts of money to get the loans done. Would you agree? 100%. Absolutely. It's ridiculous. I mean, I look at some of these costs, I'm thinking, wait a minute. So you're going to give somebody 3.5%, but you're going to charge them two points up front. So I'm thinking, okay, now wait, how does that make sense? I mean, and then, well, well the seller can pay it. I understand the seller can pay it, but really the buyer's paying it. All they did is raise the sales price up 2% so that, I mean, it, there's nothing free. So in this loan, there's nothing free. There, are, there is going to be one significant additional cost, and that's going to be the interest rate on the first mortgage. The interest rate on the first mortgage is going to be anywhere from one full percentage point to one and three quarters percentage point above the current market. So if the current market is seven, that means the interest rate that the buyer's gonna get is gonna be somewhere between eight to eight and three quarters. If it's six, it's gonna be somewhere between seven to seven and three quarters. Now, here's how that impacts you and I and our borrower. I was looking at a loan, an FHA loan, from one of our agents here in the office last week and did a pre-approval for $250,000. And then I got this, and th this particular uh, mom and son are short on cash. So when this came out, I thought, oh, maybe they would fit into this bucket. And they do. They fit into the bucket for this loan. But the pre-approval went from 250 to 208. <laughs> so <laughs> where they're looking, they can, you can actually get homes for $200,000 and actually pretty nice homes. Yes, in Georgia. Yes. So, so, so anyway, uh, what I'm saying is, now here's the thing. As I put in Friday's Finest, this program is not a game changer. It's not. What it is, is it gives you and I something else to talk about. It gives you and I something else to go on social media with. It gives you and I something else to present when you've got a buyer that you, you're talking, talking to and they're short on cash and they'd probably end up going FHA, not to say this is the right program for them, but you can talk about it with them, which helps reel them in because the goal is to get them to work with you. That's the goal. So this becomes a tool in your arsenal so that you can help bring that buyer to become a potential client of yours. That's what the beauty of this program is. The program itself is just, you know, I'm sure we'll probably do one or two or three of these loans before the end of the year. The people who presented the program, I'm sure they're just like super excited that we're just gonna go. And I'm like, wait a minute once. I would rather help somebody figure out a way to save their three and a half percent or go to mom and dad and get their three and a half percent or go to their brother. You know, I am a firm believer that not everybody should have a house today. I disagree with our government. I, now you'll notice I said not everybody have a house today. I like when people have skin in the game. Maybe it's because I'm old and I was brought up by a father who was in World War II and a grandfather that was in World War I. And, you know, they, are very, they were very conservative from the way they handled things financially. And they believe there should be, there, you should have skin in the game on most anything that we do in life. Housing, to me, is the same. There's nothing wrong if you have some skin in the game. So I'd rather have somebody help them find 
that 3.5%, if possible. But there are going to be some people, like maybe this mother and son that are trying to buy, and they are wonderful people. And they've actually got about $5,000 of their own money that they might not have to use. So in a case like that, I'm looking at it saying, you know what, they could probably do this, and if I can help them do what I would. But again, they're going to go from 250 down to 205. Big difference. So now there's a lot of information. There's actually the second, before I go on, questions. And then I'll go on to the next two parts of this loan that you at least want to know a little bit about. Anything. All right, cool. The second mortgage is going to be for 3.5%. That's the down payment. And that 3.5% can be done, handled in one of two ways. Now catch this. There's a fully amortized payment, and then there's one where there's no payment, and it's forgiven at the end of 10 years. So there's two different ways to do it. The second one, they said it right on the presentation last week. There's not a lot of people doing the one where it's forgiven at the end of 10 years. The primary reason is because the, uh, the qualification goes down quite a bit, largely because the interest rate goes up so much. So the other one where it's fully amortized, 3.5%, it's amortized over a 30-year period, payback, um, and you know, you, it's really not that bad of a deal because it's such a small amount of money. Now, the interest rate's high. The interest rate is two full points above the first mortgage rate. So if the first mortgage rate is 6.5, that's going to be 8.5. You don't have to remember all this. We do. But, so it's going to be a higher. But it's on such a small loan amount, it, doesn't make, it just doesn't make a big difference. It doesn't change the loan all that much. Interesting. No prepayment penalties. They can pay it off at any time, whether they pay it off by selling the house or whether they pay it off with a refinance. And they might refinance it, especially if, you know, if properties go up, maybe we can get them into a better, a better loan, maybe into a conventional loan if property values have gone up. So the second mortgage, the second piece, the 3.5%, is probably going to have a small payment on it, it's going to be a high interest rate, but a small payment, and that can be paid off at any time. There's no need to pay it off early, and that's what I would advise the client. Don't go rushing to pay it off early unless you sell the house or refinance. But the beauty is no prepayment penalty. Now, the other piece that, goes, that, that makes this work, in my opinion, really well for someone, if they're going to have to go this route, is the fact that there's no other, I mean, when you look at it from a closing cost standpoint, they don't have money. So the seller can contribute toward, the, toward their closing expenses. And on an FHA loan, how much can the seller contribute on an FHA loan? Who knows? I'm sorry? Up to 6%. Up to 6%, exactly. Up to 6% of what? Exactly, 6% of the sales price. So if my sales price is $300,000, the seller could pay up to, there wouldn't be $18,000 of closing expenses, but except in those goofy loans you're doing, um, <laughs> but, uh, but you could have as much as, three, as much as 6%. Well, that's a good thing because most of these loans are probably gonna have some discount points on them in addition to the higher rate. So the seller can pay up to 6%. So what you want to do is when you're negotiating this, the buyer can't go getting all greedy and thinking, you know what, they're asking 300,000. Let's see if we can go in with an offer for 270. What are you kidding me? You're getting a no down payment loan. You're gonna ask the seller to pay all of the closing expenses, which if there's a couple points on the loan, that's gonna be another six grand on top of everything else. So it could be. 13, 14, or 15,000. You know what? Let's make sure this house, they're asking 300. I think this house will appraise for 308. Let's give them 308 and ask them to pay all of our closing expenses. 
up to whatever the maximum is that it's going to be. So the beauty of it is, when you think about this, not only don't they have to come with any money to closing, but all of their closing expenses can be paid by the seller as long as the home's going to appraise out for whatever that value is. Now, another thing about down payment assistance loans, generally speaking, down payment assistance loans are available to people that have got incomes at or below the median income for that particular census tract. Not this loan. Listen to this. People who qualify for this loan, you take the median income in that census tract and multiply it by 160%. It's not 85% of the census tract income. It's 160. So if the census tract says it's just to make it easy, $100,000, somebody can make $160,000 combined household income and qualify for this loan. So again, this is probably not the loan that you and I are going to do a ton of, but it gives us something to talk about. If you've got somebody talking about that ridiculous Georgia Dream loan, forgive me, video, I'm just down on Georgia Dream, but, and have been for 15 years. But the thing is, if you got somebody who's thinking about that loan, it has all of those uh, income qualifications to it that people don't qualify in. So what would you do? You could look at this loan for them. Now, credit score requirements, we go down to 600 on it. Um, in all honesty, I, well, I, although I have not done this yet, but I have a very sneaky suspicion. If we get below 620 on a credit score, and I run it through automated underwriting, desktop underwriter for Fannie Mae is probably going to come back, and they're going to make that loan very, very difficult to get approved. My, my debt-to-income ratios are probably going to have to be very low. So if you, like right now, if, if we're doing an FHA loan and I've got somebody that's got a 660 credit score, I mean, I can get away with probably 45 on the housing debt to income and 56 or seven on the total debt to income. That's not going to happen on this program because there's no money in it for them. So this program, those ratios are going to come down a little bit. And that's part of, besides the fact the interest rates higher, it's part of what causes the 250 to go down to 205 because it's going to be a little bit tougher to qualify. Desktop underwriter is going to make, that's the automated underwriting engine for Fannie Mae that we use. That's going to be looking at this and saying, hey, we're going to have to drop this down. We're not going to just issue everybody an approval. All right? Questions? Bill? You may have said it, but it's, is this program only for first-time home buyers, or is it available for... Oh, no, available. Thank you, Bill. No, it's available. It's not just first-time home buyers. Okay. It's anybody. Okay. It's anybody. Now, same rules apply to FHA. If you have another FHA loan, you can't necessarily go get another FHA loan. This is primary residence only. It is one or two unit properties. So there's some flexibility there. Um, this work with tax ID buyers? Not this one, no. No. And then we have a group in our company that does tax ID. And um, I don't personally, because I don't do enough of them to, to know. But if you do have a situation like that, I can refer it over to the group at our company that does them all the time. And some of you run across that periodically. All right, other questions? Anything else? Uh, before we leave, since we've got just a couple more minutes, what are your thoughts about this? I want to get some feedback. What are your thoughts? It's good, it's bad, it's terrible, it's wonderful. What? Give me some thoughts. Steve? I can see people going for that because um, I think people tend to be, okay, I'll pay the extra interest rate and worry about that another day. Uh, and more focused on what they're laying out in the beginning. Mm -hmm. so I, I can think of buyers that would be Okay, that good, be good. So you're, you're seeing that there could be some people that are just saying, look, I don't, to me, paying a higher interest rate, to me, that's not a big deal. If I don't have to come up with the extra money, that's a blessing. Okay, good, I like that. Bill? 
Um, is there a minimum length of time they have to own the home or pound the home before refinancing in this? No. Loan? Well, I'm going to answer that. I'm going to answer that two ways, Bill. The answer to that is no, there's not. Okay. okay? But I will, I'm going to answer this on behalf of the mortgage industry. And all of you are on straight commission just like me. All right? Some of you may have heard me say this before. I do loans for people that are selling a current house. But they don't want to sell the house until they buy this one. So they own house A. They want to buy house B, and they're in a financial position where they don't have to sell house A to buy house B. So they come to me and say, Greg, I want to buy house B. And so I say, okay, fine, let's go buy house B. And Greg, what we want to do, as soon as we buy the house, then we're going to put a house A on the market, and when we sell it, we're going to pay off house B. Is there going to be a problem with that? And the way I answer that to them is say, no, it's not a problem, but I am going to ask you a favor. Second part of the in the mortgage industry, in lending, not just mortgage, cars, anything else, in the lending industry, if I give you a loan and you take that loan and you do not make six payments and it's paid off, both my company and me, and this is the mortgage industry, not just my company, every place I've ever worked, we got to give back everything we made on the loan. So I would ask you as real estate professionals, if somebody were to buy a house, and turn around and sell that house within six months, and you had to give back 100% of your commission, how would you feel? You probably wouldn't feel real good about it. So what I do is I explain to my borrower, and I simply ask them, would you mind making six house payments before you pay off the house? 100% of my buyers, and I have a lot that do this, they wait six months. And then they make their, they make their uh, final payment, and they're done. And that way, so Bill, the answer to your question, no, but yes. All right? That's how I answer that. And you'll find I'm very transparent with that. I don't have any, there's no secret to it. I don't, I mean, people would rather know. I've got, I just closed the loan on Friday. These people are going to be selling their, um, their house and down in Daphne, Alabama. And when they do that, they will then, you know, pay off the one up here. And they've said, Greg, no worries. We'll just pay it off in September or October. Jim and Sue, thank you. All right. Any other questions before we, before we break up? Hey, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.